Hello there and welcome to what is now episode 7 of Cancer Face. Uh, coming up on today's show, <laughs> if nobody leave me alone, coming up on today's show we have uh, some uh, correspondence um, and we're focusing on our, our youth wing this week. Um, we've also uh, got some uh, a description, I'm going to tell, be telling you about my three exciting visits to James Cook on consecutive days during the past week, which was to get me ready for radiotherapy. Um, so that involved mask fitting and scans and things. Um, and we'll have our usual regular features. Uh, we'll be uh, giving some advice on how to talk to the person with cancer. And uh, we'll be finishing on a high note by thinking about the positives. And I think this week's positive really will make those of you without cancer just that little bit jealous. Um, but first of all, to our correspondence, and so we're focusing on youth this week, and this one is actually from Lucy Wilkinson, who sent an email. She's age seven. Um, now, I would say to Lucy and an increasing number, actually, of, of, of uh, young viewers, um, what on earth are you doing watching this kind of material? Uh, really, I mean, and more importantly, do your parents know that you're watching this kind of material? I mean, if there's anybody out there under 14 who's watching this and the parents don't know, then you should stop and go now and tell them what you've been watching. And, um, and uh, if your parents do know that you've been watching this um, and uh, are happy with it, then you, you, frankly you should sack them. You should just uh, pop along to social services and say, uh, uh, my parents don't even watch this kind of material and uh, show them a, a sample and um, they'll, they'll sort it out with some new parents who, who will protect you rather better. Um, but Lucy, Lucy, little Lucy sends this letter and she says, do you think that you still dream when you die? I presume when she says when you die, she doesn't mean me personally because that would be a little close to the mark, but she means at one, does one, when one dies, does one, one still have dreams? And this is interesting, isn't it, Nubsy? Because this is, this is the kind of thing we've been chatting quite a bit about this past week, Nubsy and I. And um, uh, we can come out with a very clear and unequivocal answer. The answer to Lucy is no. No, you do not dream when you die at all. Um, and the reason for that is that you don't exist any longer after you die. Um, so if you try and imagine the kind of dreams you had two years before you were born, for example. Uh, you didn't have any, did you? There was nothing at all there because uh, you didn't exist. Um, and it'll be the same after you die. You don't exist because a dream needs, needs a dreamer, really. Um, and if a dreamer doesn't exist anymore, there are no dreams. So I'm glad we could clear that one up for you. Right, this last week we've been uh, along, uh, or I've been along to... Uh, uh, James Cook Hospital, three days running, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. Um, on the Monday we did a long appointment where I went for the mask fitting. Uh, this is all three appointments to prepare me for, for, for radiotherapy. Uh, and the mask fitting was interesting, quite a long appointment as I say. You went along, they did it in three bits. Um, very good the staff are explaining exactly what is going to happen. They, they do go to length to make sure that you you know what to expect. Um, so the first bit uh, I, I went in to, uh, ever so young, I mean these people are ridiculously young, but they seem to know what they're doing. Um, and what you do for it all is they, they, they take a mould of the back of your head and they just apply lots of stuff um, to the back of your head, a kind of warm, wet sensation. You put a uh, swim cap on actually and then they, they, they put this mould of stuff around you. Uh, and then you have to go away for an hour or so whilst all this sets. And when you come back, uh, there is the mould for the back of your head, but it's laid on the kind of uh, this bench thing and it's got um, uh, little legs on it so that you can actually lie back um, on the bench with your head in the back of the mould. Um, and when you go back, they, they then produce this kind of mesh stuff. Um, I'll show you a picture of this shortly due to our technological advances. Um, but it's this kind of mesh sheet and it's uh, soaked in warm water uh, and they put it over your face and then they kind of mould it 
the, the very exact fit of your entire face. Um, and uh, then you go away again um, while that kind of cools down uh, and, and sets. And um, then you go along again uh, just when it's cooled down because it shrinks a bit when it cools down. And um, you lie on the bench with your head in the, in the, in the back, back mould and the front bit applied to the front. Um, and it's a very tight fit all over your face and the kind of top of your chest bit here. Um, and here we have a picture of one. Just to show you what they, uh, what they look like. Um, so what happened next was the following day. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you, that that's, uh, the following day's appointment was at 9.30 in the morning, which is it's at, uh, my, my radiotherapy appointments are at 8.00, sorry, sorry, my chemotherapy appointments are also at 8.30 on a Friday morning. So I thought I'd have a go at staying in the hotel, which is opposite the hospital. Uh, it's a good hour's journey to the hospital for me. It's over getting up ridiculously early, walking this far, and all that kind of thing. Um, so um, I went and stayed in this hotel and it was, it was alright, uh, it was, wasn't too bad at all, uh, very comfortable etc. They do send you emails um, which say things like, um, we hope you are excited about your forthcoming visit to our hotel. Um, and I can't say that I'm particularly excited um, about the CT scan, I'm certainly not excited about the chemotherapy. Um, but I suppose that's, that's targeted more at holiday makers, so they what holiday makers are doing in South Wales, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, and uh, yes, it's a little bit inappropriate. Thank, when we um, got this little thing from the Macmillan, there's all about uh, radio, radiotherapy, and they call it the Radiotherapy Welcome Pack. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm not sure the Welcome Pack is quite the best phrase to describe this, but anyway, there you go, it's what they do. So on the Tuesday, it went along 9.30, and um, this time, uh, they gave me a CT scan, a very, again, very good at explaining what's what. Um, and uh, quite relatively short, but it was a weird sensation because um, you were seeing CT scans, I think, uh, you, you know, you go into this kind of strange, uh, kind of tumble dryer thing, um, and you're laid on your back on this board. But now I'm laid on the back of the board with my uh, uh, head covered by this mask, which is then kind of pinned down to the board so you kind of you could move actually because it would pop open it's like pressed at the back it pulled up it will pop open I was that doing the scan so it's a bit of the same weird sensation because you're being pressed down um, and uh, it wasn't too bad for the CT scan um, but the third appointment I had on Wednesday was for the MRI scan and that was a bit difficult a because I was pinned down uh, and the thing by now was kind of pressing on the Adam's apple, so I kept wanting to swallow. I was kind of a weird ache in my left uh, shoulder, um, which wasn't very comfortable. But the main thing with the MRI scan was it went on for quite a while, and um, foolishly, I, I didn't ask how long it was going to go on for, and uh, I started having all sorts of fancies that they all popped out for the lunch and forgot about me. Um, plus, the MRI scan is making all these weird noises. Um, in fact, here's a short sample of them now. So you can imagine listening to that kind of thing when it's pinned back. It could be a little bit there. It could just be a little bit there, but, uh, but there you go. So that was that. That was this week. Um, and uh, there's nothing much next week. Just uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, a swallowing education group um, run by a speech and language therapist and then the following week I start on the chemo radiation as they call it. Um, so that's that. Um, what else would you say? To, oh yes, of course, the, the, the feature. I'm just going to flag this up because I'm going to talk about this perhaps a bit more next week when we've got less events to describe. Um, but I just want to talk about the thing about battling cancer. Um, it's pretty kind of ubiquitous, I think, in our, our culture. Um, this notion that cancer is something that one battles. It's not just cancer. I, I saw somebody the other day who died after a, a three-year battle with motor neurone disease. 
Um, and uh, particularly since uh, since charities so have become much more like businesses and they're kind of uh, advertising and trying to increase their market share, etc. Uh, the cancer um, uh, adverts, I, I do find particularly weird in their tone. Um, I'll talk about this a bit more next week, but the main thing I would say is that I wouldn't assume that everybody you meet who has cancer thinks of themselves as battling it. Um, it's uh, perhaps something to follow their cue with. If they tell you that they're battling cancer, then you can perhaps join them in that language. But I wouldn't uh, assume that everybody sees battling cancer as being a, an appropriate or a helpful metaphor. Um, but on the more bright side, looking on the positives, and this is what I think will make you jealous, uh, this actually is quite specific to bladder cancer. Uh, of the cancers, there, may be, there are also other conditions actually where you do get this, but what you also get, what you can get uh, when you have bladder cancer is one of these cards which is on your screen now. Um, and uh, these cards are a real boom because they mean that wherever you are, um, uh, you can dash into a shop, uh, if you're busted for a wee that is of course, if you're dying to urinate, you can run into a shop and um, and you know it's uh, in the shop there, um, which uh, is a great plus for you, uh, particularly if your blood defense gets sorted out, you can still have it and um, you're in, a, in a, a, a wide range of shops. So um, I'm sure you're all quite jealous of that, those of you without cancer, but uh, hey ho, uh, there have to be some advantages and that's one definite plus I think. Um, I should say actually, and just say on the card, that uh, you do need to go and urinate in the toilet uh, in the shop. Uh, don't make the same mistake that I did. And uh, apologies once again to Mr Prendergast of Timpson Shoes, the manager of Timpson Shoes in Harrogate. Uh, sorry for that little misunderstanding. Um, but you live and learn, don't you? You live and learn. So that's it for next week. Now next week will be the last of our first, we'll call it a series, we'll call it our, the last of our first series of Cancer Face, um, because after that, as I said, starting radio chemotherapy, each week's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, <clears throat> I've got this written down this list of side effects from chemotherapy, which are uh, fatigue, dry mouth, thick mucus, swallowing difficulties, hoarseness of voice, nausea, vomiting, loss of taste, and temporary hearing difficulties. That's just the radiotherapy without the chemotherapy. So. Um, I think during the six weeks, and probably for a couple of weeks afterwards, uh, the last thing I'm going to feel like is, is chatting away to you a lot. So um, we'll, we'll have an eight-week break, and we'll look forward to being back in the autumn. But as I say, we will be back uh, next week. And um, as I say, we'll be back in the autumn. That depends, of course, uh, on the uh, who's chosen and, and the possibility of being chosen at an internet sensation. Uh, to appear on the show Strictly Come Dancing, but we'll assume that's not going to happen for the case, uh, for the time being, sorry, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, cheerio. Bye-bye.